All right, this is 6.3, the quadratic formula. Okay, as I said, we're not gonna spend a long time on this, developing the formula, but it's important to see, for you to see how it was created. Now what this does is it allows you to find the x-intercepts for any number. Okay, now where we were working with factored form before, we wanted, we wanted had to learn how to factor, there was a lot of examples where the numbers were not whole numbers. We couldn't do it using crisscross or uh, decomposition, didn't matter what we did, we could not find those two numbers. This, uh, this formula will allow us to factor with any numbers. Can you use it on those numbers, those whole numbers that you were factoring with? Yes. Can you use it on decimals? Yes. If I ask you to factor on the exam, can you use the quadratic formula and get the answer? You can get the answer, you won't get the marks if I ask you to factor them. You still need to know how to factor. Okay, any questions there? All right, so here's how we create this. Now we've gone to vertex form just to show uh, the math that's required to do this. Okay, but here we have the A value as negative four, right here. We can see, so we'll solve it by completing the square. Okay, so we have negative four. We're going to divide negative four out of the first two terms. So that's where the negative four goes. We're left with x squared minus four, because it's negative four that we've divided out. Now we need to create the perfect square trinomial. So we're gonna take that middle term, divide it by two squared. Okay, which gives us four again. So we're gonna add four and minus four. Then we need to get that last term out of the brackets. Remember I told you this, if there's an A value, you need to multiply it by the A value in order to release it from the brackets. That gives us positive 16. Negative four times negative four is positive 16. Okay, it's out of the brackets now. It can combine with the one and we have our perfect square trinomial. We take the square root of the first term, square root of the second term, the middle sign drops down. We have our vertex form, okay. Once we have our vertex form, we can then go ahead and solve for x. Negative 15 comes to the other side, divide by negative four. We have plus or minus these two values, root 15 over two. So x is equal to two, two comes to the other side, it becomes positive two plus root 15 over two, or x is equal to two minus root 15 over two. Okay, now if we were to do that exact same process, but we've replaced the numbers with the variables a, b, and c, Okay, we can rewrite the standard term in vertex form by just using the same, the same letters A, B, and C instead of actual numbers. We do all that, we end up with this, this very long formula. It's exact same as this example, we've just left A, B, and C in there. Okay, and here's the math, if you wanna review it. All works out, you end up with this, X equals minus b plus or minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. You ask any senior math student in this school who's doing quite well in math, what's the quadratic formula? They will have this memorized. Probably the most common formula in math to memorize and the one that a lot of people, the only one, beyond a squared plus b squared equals c or y equals mx plus b. This is the senior equivalent of that, okay? X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Sounds complicated, sounds like you'll never use it again. You will use it all the time if you plan to do academic math next year, okay? There's our formula. So for AX squared plus BX plus C, notice how it's in complete standard form. That's our coefficients, a, b, and c. We can then use this formula to find out the roots or the solutions or the x-intercepts or the zeros. They call it all of these different things, okay? So the first step, you're gonna figure out what the, a, the values a, b, and c are. It's not always given in this format, right? Sometimes you need to rearrange. Okay, it might give you in vertex form. You might have to rearrange it to standard form. You just expand out. So then you're gonna evaluate the discriminant. And what the discriminant is, it's the term underneath the square root. B squared minus four AC. That's what we call the discriminant. Okay, and it's important to understand that that value ends up being positive because if not, 
you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So, in the case of parabolas that look like this, or this, which do not cross the x-axis, those would have negative discriminants. Does that make sense? Basically, the solution for x doesn't exist because they don't actually cross the x-axis. Make sense? I hope so. All right. So, the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, if it's greater than 0, it has two distinct roots. If it has, uh, sorry, if it's equal to 0, that is this example, or this example, where the vertex is right on the x-axis. So, this whole term would be 0. You get rid of the plus or minus then because plus or minus zero is still zero and you're just left with negative b over 2a. So in that case, that is the vertex right on the x-axis. And finally, as I discussed, if it is less than zero negative, it has no real roots. So it does not cross the x-axis at all. Any questions up till now? Maxis, you gotta try and stay awake. You're gonna miss this. Max, you gotta try and stay up, man. I know it's a lot, I'm trying to get through it. Still have 20 minutes. All right, so the example one, we're gonna solve each equation now. We're gonna find the exact and appropriate solutions if they exist. So ran your answer to two decimal places. So here we have our first equation. Is this in standard form? Yeah. Who can tell me? Yeah. Yes, it is, right? No trick question here. That's standard form, AX squared minus bx minus c or plus bx plus c, that's standard form. So our a value is two, our b value is negative four, and our c value is negative three. All right, so that's all we need. We have those values now, we have to plug them in to the quadratic formula. Okay, so b gets plugged in, negative, negative four becomes positive four because it's negative b. Okay, so we have, first to check the discriminant, b squared minus four ac. So we're going to plug negative 4 in for B. We're going to get negative 4 squared is 16. We're going to plug in A and C, 2 and negative 3. We're going to end up with 16 plus 24 is 40. So our discriminant is greater than 0. So we know we have two distinct roots, two values of X. Okay, so we take that discriminant, we plug it back into the formula here, right? So it goes under the root sign. We get negative negative four plus or minus root 40 over two times a. A in this case is two. We get x equals four plus or minus 40, root of 40 over four. We get the value of x equals four over four plus or minus root 40 over four. We can then continue along here. Four divided by four is one, plus or minus the square root of 40 is 4.10. No, oh, let's see. Square root, I'm not sure what, what this is. Oh, four times 10, yeah, my, my bad. Four times 10, not point 10. So four times 10, right, is 40. So now, if you, if you rewrite it like this, you can take the square root of the four out of the bracket. That's how you do that, right? So the square root of four is two, and you're left with the 10 on the inside of the bracket. And the reason we do that is because then we can divide the two into the four, and we get a two on the bottom. The two on the top becomes one. We're left with one plus or minus root 10 over two. Okay, so these become our two answers. And we use a calculator to get these values, right? We do in our calculator one plus bracket root 10 divided by two. That should give us this value, 2.58. And then x equals one minus root 10 over two. You gotta make sure you use brackets on your calculator. Any questions for this one? It's getting tough, right? The math is getting tough. Quadratic formula might be the easiest to sort of know what to do, maybe the hardest in order to execute depending on how confident you are with your math. 
Okay, the first term here, this is in standard form. However, there is a common factor that we can divide out easily, which is two. So we take the two out. We're left with x squared plus two x minus five. Now we have our standard form. Why can we get rid of that two altogether? Anybody know why? Why the two disappear? Yep. Yeah, but wh where did the two go from there to there? Why the two just go away? Nobody knows why? Yeah. No, you don't. When you put it to the right side, you you can't just move it like it's plus or minus. You have to divide both sides by two, right? So zero divided by two is what? Zero. That's why it disappeared. Because you divide it by zero, zero divided by two is still zero. Okay? So now these are our values, A, B, and C. Now if we had left the two in, two, four, and 10, we would have got the same answer. A would have been two, B would have been four, and C would have been negative five. They just would have divided down later on. Much easier to work with these smaller numbers though. So our discriminant in this case is B squared minus four AC. So we plug in these values, two for B and one for A and negative five for C. You can see what I've done here. And you end up with a positive 24 for the discriminant. That means there's two answers once again. You sub into your quadratic formula where 24 is the discriminant and you solve for X, the two values of X. Any questions? And that's what we're doing. We're doing it over and over again. We're finding out standard form. We're getting A, B, and C. We're finding the discriminant. In this case, it's negative. So there's no real roots. And you're done. You know nothing crosses the X. What's so funny, Jaden? What is so funny? I'm just curious. Is it funny it's so easy? No? You're kicking his leg. You want me to stop teaching? I can stop. I'm tired too. If you guys want to take a break and learn it yourself, I don't mind. D, this one is a crazy example. Look at everything that's going on here. Anyone have any ideas of what we could do to solve this? Without looking at the answer there? What would be the first step? When you have something like this, you need to multiply everything out, gather the like terms, and put it all back into standard form. Does that make sense? I hope. That's what we're doing, right? So we're just dealing with this as it comes, 3x times 5x is 15x squared, 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x, plus 2x is on the outside, x squared minus 4x, minus times minus 3 is plus 12, and then we just gather the like terms. The x's go together, so they become 14, sorry, the x squareds become 14, the x's go together, and you get everything down to this. That's your standard form. Your A is 7, your B is negative 3, and your C is negative 6. Okay, yep. Put the, the 12x and the 2x together, so you get 14. 12x and the 2x. No, the 14 comes from 15x squared minus x squared. That's 14x squared. And this 10x minus 10x becomes plus 4x, and that's where you get the minus 6. Okay. Then you calculate your discriminant, you get 177, you know there's two distinct values, you plug that discriminant into the quadratic formula, where you have A on the front and two, two sorry, negative B on the front, B in this case was negative three, so we have positive three plus or minus the square root of 171, over two A, A is seven, so we have 14, and we get these two values. Any questions how to go from here to here? Any questions? Calculator is going to be your best friend. I can't do that in my head either. Okay, I don't know what the square root of 177 is. It's not an even number. You have to have a calculator. Okay?
Remember, you're gonna do these, you're gonna treat these as two separate equations. Three plus root 171 divided by 14 and three minus root 71. Two equations give you two different answers for x. Okay? Any questions? No? Next. Okay, so embedded in this formula is a second formula, one that determines the x-coordinate of the vertex, right? The vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is halfway between the two zeros, right? I hope all this makes sense, right? You have one zero here, one zero here. This is the discriminant, right? The square root of the discriminant, those are your, sorry, this is the, this is the solution, this is your x value, right? Your two, sorry, your two x values are here. You can see this is the formula for them. Negative b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And your middle, your, your, your uh, axis of symmetry is minus b over 2a. Okay, so your x coordinate of the vertex is minus b over 2a. That's sort of the takeaway of all this. Right? Since your zeros are this and this, if we add them together and divide by 2, that's how we get minus b 2a. It's the midpoint between these two. Right? So remember midpoint, we take 1x plus the other x and divide by 2. That's what we've done here. 1x plus the other x divide by 2. We simplify that to be negative b over 2a. That's the point of all this. So the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Okay, and that comes from the midpoint formula adding the two x values divided by two. Okay, so that's what our final takeaway here is if we have our standard form with a is not equal to zero, so we don't have a straight line, we have a parabola because a is not equal to zero, the x coordinate of the vertex is minus b over 2a. That's the takeaway. All right. Determine the coordinates of the vertex for the parabola. So, if we have standard form here, we know A, we know B, right away we can determine the X coordinate of the vertex. Right? We just plug it into this nifty new formula we have, minus B over 2A. We get minus 4 over 2 times minus 1. We get 2. Okay? That's the X value of the vertex to get the Y value. How do we get the y value if we have the x? You plug it back into the original formula. Very good. Yes, you take the original value of x, you take that 2, and you plug it back in for x here and x here, and that's what this formula is. Minus 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 11. We get negative 7. Okay? Doing the same thing over here. This is in standard form. Even though our a value is a fraction, it's still in standard form. Cannot be divided, cannot be reduced. So we have our a, b values. We can find out the x value of our vertex. We just plug it into minus b over 2a. We get 0.5 times negative uh, 3 squared. We work that out to get our y value of negative 3.5. That's our vertex. Okay. Last one. H, remember, H is the X value of our vertex, so we're going to say X, H is equal to negative B over 2A. In this case, A is equal to negative 0 0.2, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to negative 1. So we just plug in negative 1, that's our B, 2 times A. So we get negative 1 divided by negative 0.4. What's that on a calculator? It's going to be positive. Anybody helping me out? Negative one, one divided by point four. Yeah. 
Yeah, so negative one and negative is positive, so 2.5 is the value I'm looking for. That goes back into my X's. And I solve 2.5 squared. This is negative 1.25, and then this is plus 1.5. Radians here. It says 0 0.25. Okay, so our vertex then is our x value, which is h, 2.5, and our y value is 0 0.25. Okay, any questions? That is the end. All right, that is 6.2.